After two and a half minutes, our job is complete. All tasks have run successfully. We can see all our tests have passed and it's produced our artifact in Azure Pipelines. An Azure DevOps pipeline is essential if you want to set up CI, CD in Azure. Before you can release your .NET application, you need to set up a build pipeline, which is what we'll have a look at in this video. Now, if you're new to Azure, check out our video, What is Azure DevOps at youtube.com slash roundthecode. For more ASP.NET Core tutorials, visit roundthecode.com and follow us on LinkedIn at roundthecode.com slash LinkedIn. Check out our .NET 6 course on dependency injection, a must for software developers. Visit roundthecode.com slash courses. This is the project that we're going to be using to create our build pipeline. It's an ASP.NET Core web API built in .NET 6. If we give it a run, it loads up a Swagger documentation and we can see we've got one endpoint here. If we go ahead and try that out, it gives us a response of true. It also has unit tests as well. So we want to make sure that they're all passing. We can see that they're all passing. So this project is now ready for Azure DevOps. We're in our Azure DevOps project and we're going to create a pipeline. We're going to select where the code is, our repos in GitHub, so we're going to select that. We're going to select the appropriate repo, which is the Azure test project. And this gives you some templates to configure your YAML file. We're going to go with the bare minimum and select start a pipeline. Now we're going to go ahead and delete all the contents in it. And we're just going to go ahead and save it. This will now commit it to our repo. With our build pipeline set up, we can go ahead and edit it. The first thing we want to do is to set a trigger. Triggers can be used for continuous integration. So when we make a commit to a particular branch, it can go ahead and run our build pipeline. To do that, we use the trigger key. We select branches. Select include and include the branch's name, which is in this instance is the main branch. Now, every time we make a save to our YAML file, it commits it to our repo. At the moment, this would trigger off a build pipeline every time we saved it. So we want to turn this off and all we need to do is we need to add none underneath the trigger key. Microsoft has a number of virtual machines that we can use to build our pipeline. As we're using a .NET application, we can use the Windows latest. So to do that, we add the pull key, we select VM image as the key, and the value for that is Windows latest. Next, we're gonna set some variables. Variables are good because we can use the same values in different tasks. And we're gonna be using the .NET Core CLI for a number of tasks within this. To do this, we set the variables key, and we're going to select two variables. We're going to select the build platform. We're going to select that to any CPU and build configuration to release. Now we can go ahead and set up some tasks. Before we set up tasks, I want to add some extra variables. I want to add one for the solution. So I'm going to name that round the code. Got Azure test project.sln and I also want to do the same for the web project. I'm going to set it as project. I'm going to change the extension name to csproj. Now we can add some tasks and we need to add that within the steps key. The first task we want to do is we want to install NuGet onto our agent. So we do that by selecting the NuGet tool installer here. We need to, there's, there's a few advanced options here, but we're not going to set them as we don't need to. Let's add that into our YAML file. We don't need this inputs. What I like to do is I like to add a name and a display name to each task. Now the name for this is going to be new get tool installer. And the display name is going to be the same, but with spaces. Now the difference between the two is the name acts as an ID, so you can't have spaces in it. And the display name is more human readable. Our next step is to restore any NuGet packages. So we're going to do a search for NuGet and select the NuGet task here. 
We've got the restore here as the command. We've got the SLN file, so it's looking for any SLN file within the repo. I like to be a bit more specific and we select the solution variable here. So to reference that, we can wrap it around a dollar and brackets and do that. And everything else should be fine. So we can add that in. At this stage, we could build our application to see if it's running properly. But we've also got unit tests that we want to pass and it's gonna to have to build properly in order to run the tests. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna select .NET Core and we're gonna run the tests at this stage. I'm going to select the command as test. The path to project is going to be the solution. Once again, we set it as a variable so we can reference it with the dollar solution wrapped in brackets. For the arguments, we've also set a build configuration variable. And we're going to reference it at this stage. So we're going to build it in release mode. So we will just reference it with the build configuration. And we want to publish test results and code coverage. Let's go ahead and add that in. Assuming that our tests have run fine, we want to go ahead and publish it. We're going to use the .NET Core task here. We're going to select Publish. Now we're going to unselect Publish Web Projects. If that's selected, it will find the first web project within your solution. That's fine if you've only got one, but I want to be a bit more specific just in case we were to add different web projects at a later date. So I'm going to go ahead and untick that. And the path to project, we're going to reference the csproj file this time. So if we go back up here to our variables, we can see that we've referenced the project in our variable project. So we're going to add that in here. Now for the arguments, once again, we're going to use the configuration parameter. We also want to add an output parameter and we're going to set this to the build.artifact staging directory. What this will do is it will output our published files to the artifact staging directory. What will happen in a minute is we will publish the build artifacts up to Azure pipelines, which can be used in a release. And we're going to untick the SIP publish projects and we're going to go ahead and add that task. Finally, I want to go ahead and publish the build artifacts to Azure pipelines. So we'll do a search for publish build artifacts. We're going to give it a different name of Azure test project. You can see our path to publish is the build artifact staging directory variable and the location is Azure pipelines. Let's go ahead and add that. Now I want to go ahead and add the name and display name to each of these tasks. So we know what each one is doing. So for this, we're going to set that to new get restore. I'm going to set that the name, uh, the display name as restore packages. Do the same for the tests. We give it a name of tests and display name of run tests. Same for publish, call it publish. And once again, for publishing the build artifacts. Let's go ahead and save that. That will commit our YAML file to our repo. Now we can go ahead and run our build pipeline to see if it's going to run or not. We can run our build pipeline by clicking on the run button up here. Select the branch and tag and commit. We're going to leave that as it is. We're going to go ahead and run it. That's now running our build pipeline. It's going to take a few moments, so we'll come back when it's finished. After two and a half minutes, our job is complete. All tasks have run successfully. We can see all our tests have passed and it's produced our artifact in Azure pipelines. If we have a look at the artifacts and have a look at the published files, we can see we've got all our published files from our application. This is now ready for release. Let us know in the YouTube comments what is the one thing you like about Azure pipelines? Has it sped up your build time or maybe you can do more releases? Also check out our video series Dev to Azure where we go ahead and publish an application to Azure. You can check that out at youtube.com forward slash round the code 
And thanks very much for watching and hit a like on the video.